everything, everything has been on a tear. So we have uh, Bitcoin going up to 19,100, which you can see it's tapping into this long term, the top end of a falling wedge that we've been, you know, in for since September of last year. Now that combined with the Dixie absolutely taking a shit, but also if, if we pull up the weekly here, you can see that it is, it is tapping right into this long term area of support. And then you've got the SPX, uh, which is the S and P 500, which is kind of the driver of all of this, which is also tapping up against resistance. I don't know, man. You know, I, I love getting bullish. Like I am one of the most bullish guys you'll ever meet. And I'm still skeptical after the absolute beating that Jerome Powell has given us this year. And, and by the way, I can't be like too mad at Jay Powell. The dude reminds me of my grandfather so much. Like every time I hear him talk, I think he just wants to like bounce me on his knee and give me Christmas gifts. And so I can't like really be too pissed off at the guy. But after being on this show for so long and especially like learning from Nick, because, you know, I definitely learn a lot from you, dude. Uh, I feel like there's a lot there's a lot of pain to come in the housing market. I think there's pain to come, obviously, on the corporate side. But what is the actual potential here? that we do see some sort of new money entering the market because for for the first time that I've seen in quite some time, it's not just it, it, Bitcoin dominance is following Bitcoin price, which in the past for other for other cycles, that's been kind of a leading indicator of new money coming into the market. And then it, it tends to trickle down to the alts. I don't know. I'm going to kick this over to you guys. What do you all think? Are we unreasonably bullish or uh, is there substance to it? Clay. Uh, of course, we're unreasonably bullish. We're always unreasonably bullish. Like that's that that is how CT goes. Um, I mean, I think you know, um, CPI came in at expectation. I think that Nick would probably say that it's a nothing burger. I think we would probably all say at this point that it, it is nothing burger. Um, you know, the one thing that was actually like pretty, like kind of telling to me was the, and I think we're going to talk about it today was the Amazon Web Services partnership with with uh, A Avalanche. And Avalanche actually led the market with like a rally of like, you know, 25, 30, 40, 50 percent. Um, and we haven't seen good news actually trigger a, a good price movement in anything in months and months and months. So for me, that was actually a, a good sign that we're, we're headed in the right direction. So I don't know. I'm sure Nick would probably say, like, expect volatility and like, like Nick would Nick. <laughs> the man's cold and he gets shit on by by the the hosts of this show nick what do you think man what do you think look if you zoom out and you kind of think about the timeline of events going from cataclysmic collapses in the market you know interest rates going from zero to four percent and you just think about well how how does that end what does that look like well some of those things have started happening uh late last year and, and certainly this month as well um, a lot of job cuts, deep job cuts. Some of these companies are on round two. Um, we'll probably see round three. So this is just the natural evolution of how you move from a, a, a bull market regime uh, into a bear market regime. And then you need some consolidation, not with price, but just it takes time for some of these things to play out. So when you see the market... Um, go up the way it has both equities and crypto crypto more recently, but equities have kind of been chopping around and, and, and you know, certain companies have been doing quite well for weeks now. Um, it's just the market working out who is going to be able to beat their profitability numbers and who still has a lot more pain. Um, and there's a, there's a few things to unpack there. Um, but as it relates to crypto specifically, I've been selling only because I think it's a fantastic spot to take some profits um, if you bought anything over the last three months. Um, what usually happens is markets try and think ahead, right? So when you see the Fed's positioning change somewhat, being less aggressive with rate, rate rises, maybe they stop raising. So the market gets ahead of itself. And it's like, well, that's good news. People start buying. But you usually what happens in these kind of situations is you see a lot of false starts, right? Where the market will pump five to 10%, people get ahead of themselves. Some companies will release their profitability results. They suck because that's what happens in recessions and we are in recession. Market comes back down, goes back up, comes back down. So, you know, if you're sitting on some profits, take some, 
you're certainly going to get more opportunities to buy back in um, over the course of the next few weeks and months. And this is in equities and in and and in crypto. And just be patient. Like this is not going to go up in a straight line. The market will recover. All markets will recover because that's what happens in economic cycles. The only question is how long. And 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 the answer to how long is never weeks, mm. ever. Right. Sometimes it's not even months. So this is great. The market's moving up. You know, confidence is building. Um, projects are, are, are getting some some air under their wings. Um, you know, companies are cutting are cutting jobs. This is good for profitability. But what you need to remember is when you see these job cuts, and then you see the company kind of shoot up. I know Coinbase caught a bid in the last few days after announcing they were, they, they were getting rid of twenty percent of their workforce. That doesn't show up for a few quarters in the financial statements. Because when you let someone go, you need to pay them severance. That's a cash expense for the most part. And he's recognized in that quarter. So when Coinbase reports results next quarter, they're going to suck, right? Artificially, they're going to suck, but they're going to suck. And because people don't do their work, they see the headlines, Coinbase will get sold off. So if you happen to have bought Coinbase 20% lower, sell it, take some profits, and then buy it the day after they announce their shitty earnings. If that's how, you know, if you want to own Coinbase, that is. So... This is, this is healthy. It, it provides opportunity for people that have a good head on their shoulders. Don't get ahead of yourself. Don't start putting on leverage leverage longs at Bitcoin 19K. That would be stupid. Um, take some profits and, and, and lift the fight another day. But it's positive. It's certainly positive. Yeah, so I, look, I think Bitcoin is unreasonably low right now um, and has been for a while. I think, you know, 17K, 18K, 19K all like ridiculous, like unreasonably irrationally low. Uh, 30K should be the bottom at any given time, but we've had all this unreasonable or black swan induced selling that's gone on throughout all of 2022. And, you know, there's been no real impetus for the mark for the Bitcoin market to rally. Um, and that could be, you know, that could happen. But my guess is, is that Nick is right, that we're basically crab walking right now that this is not the start of a monster rally. You know, no monster truck rallies are coming anytime soon. And, uh, I, you know, I think we're going to be here until mid-year is sort of, in my, I'm just guessing, but my guess is mid-year is the soonest that we'll see a true rally out of this stuff. And until then, we'll basically just be crab walking and slow walking up. So also, I'd like to mention that both of my, uh, it's Friday the 13th, both, both my grandmothers were 13th children, which should make me a warlock. But so far, oh my god, <laughs> what the heck? That's a lot yeah. of kids, man. I know, Double sharp. What are you? What's your feeling? How, you look really refreshed, man. I know that you've had some some vacation time, or at least I feel like you have. I don't know what. What do you think about all this, or don't you? I don't know. I mean, uh, yeah, my standard answer is that I don't really. I think the markets go up and go down, and you know things change. It's I, I think at some point, um, you know, different monetary policies play out over time i think what nick and everyone was saying is right it's not like you don't usually see overnight changes with things so you'll see you know effects of things play out over several months i think um there's still concern generally in the market about recessions and um you know just you know the state of the economy generally and that ends up playing into crypto markets i have you know just sort of anecdotally i have seen a lot of people be more positive, which I think that ends up playing into, you know, how well markets end up doing is how well people feel about it. So people are generally feeling more positive and I've seen people working on, uh, you know, new projects and being more excited to, to work on things. So I think all of that is, is, you know, positive overall. A little injection of enthusiasm into the market is, yeah. is very welcome. And I just, before I kick it over to you, Clay, I just wanted to show a couple of a couple of tweets real quick. One from El Capo Crypto, whom I know a lot of you guys follow, right? And so he's got a pinned tweet from November 19th. It's, it's a while back. Uh, the more I look at the charts, the clearer I see the capitulation is coming. One of the biggest bull traps I've ever seen. Uh, and now this was the guy that, so like he not only called the top, uh, he kind of came down and called the bottom too. He was calling for 16 K back at 55 and people were like threatening him with death in his comments. Like it was absolutely out of control. I think 
I don't know. I'm going to reserve judgment, but, but for me personally, like obviously my bags are, they're long-term bags. I'm not going anywhere. I don't, you know, have any particular time frame for the most part. So like if, if you're here for a few years or a few decades or whatever, and you're just in BTC accumulation mode, it's probably a great range to do that if you don't need to sell it. Um, but I do have, I do have a bag of stables, uh, on the off chance because you know what happens when if if this does turn out to be a bull trap, right? And you've got half of Twitter that went just unreasonably long because you know they did because FOMO is a real thing and and the momentum is a real thing, right? If the big boys come back in and smack this back down, uh, I, I would imagine there would be quite an acceleration of it and that alts would take a significant beating. Uh, and so, you know, for me, I'm keeping a small bag of, of stables on the off chance and try not to lose any sleep that those aren't appreciating in value. Go ahead, Clay. Sorry, man. No, I mean, I, th I think that we pretty much nailed it. Like the bottom line is you don't have to be long on the market. Like there's platforms like GMX, like Gains Network, where you can take positions that are that are not, you know, long positions. So I, I think the theme of 2023 is probably going to be volatility. And there's a lot of ways to make money in volatility. And for like me personally, it's also like solidly fork season. And so I plan to take advantage of that. And so whether, you know, regardless of what uh, chain it's on, there's there's a lot of opportunities with Equalizer and Thena and, and, and um, uh, Satin that's coming to Polygon. And so for me, it's like, you know, just don't marry your bags, marry your opportunities. And so I've actually moved more things around in the last, I don't know, like two months than, than I ever thought that I would because like all of us, Get married to our tokens and married to whatever that you're sitting on but i've kind of let that go and said this isn't the market to do that so that's that's me personally